Honey beekeeping is a practice that has been around over 4,000 years. In New Zealand, initially starting as a home craft after the European settlement. To date, around 3,000 Kiwis keep honeybees. Tens of thousands of beehives are required for pollination nationwide. Honeybees are responsible for the production of a sweet, golden coloured liquid, honey. The commercialisation of honey is one of the most lucrative industries worldwide, generating over 90 billion New Zealand dollars annually. However, honeybees do much more than making honey. They're some of the main pollinators on the planet. Honeybees are responsible for the pollination of one third of our food. The process of pollination produces our abundant food supply of vegetables and fruit. And thus, without them, we would find it hard to survive. Honeybees are also essential to the New Zealand sheep industry, as they are the main pollinators of nitrogen-rich clover. We risk losing our food supply. Without pollination, we will lose food from our plate. Over time, seed stock will perish, and we will be left with the unpollinated. This is due to a tiny parasitic mite known as Varroa. The Varroa itself is called Varroa destructor, for the reason that there is no cure for it. At the beginning of the millennium, New Zealand was one of the few countries in the world free from the threat of Varroa. When it was accidentally imported into the North Island, the National Beekeepers Association gathered every year to share information on how to contain the spread of the mite. And today, the far south is the last frontier. In fact, the reality is this thing is going to go whether we like it or not. And it has gone, and it's gone right through the country. Pretty well on schedule, we've done our best to battle it and hold it back and keep it at bay, but it's pretty well moved through, through the country right on schedule. So our experience was um, a number of us found it at fairly low levels in a reasonably localised area around Wanaka, and also it happened in Queenstown at about the same time where there was some hives bought on trade me down from Christchurch and, um, and uh, the bra was all of a sudden in our area. Well, it's sort of a little bit hard to say how long it's been around. You know, you hear these stories that it takes a long time for Roa to really develop, but my experience is my word, this, it just, it travels so unbelievably fast and seems to develop up so quick that it, if you don't, if you're not sort of ready for it or sort of mentally prepared to get out and do something about it, um, it, it, it will uh, really knock you off your perch real quick. An associate professor at the biochemistry department of the University of Otago, Dr. Peter Dearden is the director of Genetics Otago. He's a specialist in honeybee biology and knows very well how devastating Varroa mite is to honeybees. If a, if a mite, an adult mite, finds a bee, then uh, it will attach itself to it, so the bee will carry it, so the bee can fly with it and, and will take it into a hive. So if you have a hive that has um, varroa mite and, the, and it's dying and there's a hive next door and bees from the hive next door go into that hive, then they'll spread the mite. So it's very effectively transmitted between hives. But they also carry viruses which seem to affect the ability of bees to fly or to um, behave properly in the hive. And they, those viruses seem to be transmitted by the mites as well. So again, there's a bit of a double whammy there with the mites feeding on the bees and then their viruses which also spread through the hive. Currently, the only reliable treatment against Varroa involves the use of pesticides. The application of these is directly into the hive. This treatment is non-organic. Basically any hive that isn't managed to a high standard will die. Everything is going to have chemicals in it. You can use two of the least toxic strips, there's three different kinds. 
there is no such thing as New Zealand organic honey anymore. It might say organic, but it can't be because you can't not treat them. We have what looks like a stable situation at the home, but it's not, I think, and, as, and we already have some evidence that, well, certainly overseas, there's lots of evidence of, of mites that are resistant. So we expect to see resistance appearing in New Zealand pretty soon. I had heard of it briefly from Britain, where in there they already had some cases of resistant varroas, which means they've become resistant to the chemical treatments, the pesticides which they use. So that's a worry. And this mite has caused enormous damage because it changes bees from being an animal that is wild but we manage to an animal that is dependent on us. It has to be domesticated. We have to keep using the chemicals to kill the mite for us to enable to keep bees. There's a lot of possibilities in terms of selective breeding in honeybees. We know from studies both overseas and in New Zealand that there's genetic variation in the traits which control the bees' response to the mites. There's a thing called hygienic behaviour. The bees themselves, like you say, they, if they find any bees that are dying, they will quickly remove them from the hive. And that is what you need in the hive to combat the varroas, to be hygienic as possible. Just chuck them out. In association with a, with a honeybee company, we've been trying to breed high bees with high hygienic behaviour. And we see that in some of our hives we have very low levels of mites indeed, so that's, that's good news. And we're hoping that that's going to help in the battle against varroa mite. However, finding genetic solutions is not the only way to save honeybees. We need more bee beekeepers, we need more people who think about bees as an important part of the ecosystem and you know, more bees would be great as well. People can get beehives. Um, most towns and cities around the country have local beekeeping clubs who can help you get set up, tell you where to get the equipment and teach you how to do it. Once you know what you're doing, it's not onerous to keep a, a hive. Uh, you know, you, you get honey out of it, you have the fun of watching the bees. It's a fantastic you know, biological thing that you can have in your garden and, and look after. And it's not that hard. If you've got the opportunity, it's a fun thing to do. You learn a lot and you know, you're helping the environment. What we're doing now is the prevention is just not moving your hives to the areas that have them and speaking to everyone to stop them from doing that. That's the prevention, that's what stopped it getting here for hopefully another year. If we could get our levies maybe slightly even increased but have that strips, everybody get, every beekeeper in the country gets the amount of strips that they need for the amount of hives they have registered in with their fees and then everybody treats at the same time. I think if the whole country got together in one big collective consciousness on that point of view, it would make a huge difference. And just rather than just leave it to anarchistic chaos of just do what you like, you know, just organise, basically. I suspect that for a long time it will not be that we're eradicating the mite, it'll be that we're living with it and finding ways to cope with it. We started beekeeping back in the early 90s and we've been looking over our shoulder just about the whole of that time waiting for the variety to arrive. And when it finally gets here, we just get up, you've just got to get on and live with it as best you can.